What's going on guys, Pixelated here, back at it again with another review. Today we are looking at a homegrown collaboration, took place in my own home country. Hometown Hero Haven had a collaboration with the famed Three Stripes brand. It is the Haven X Adidas Consortium Ultra Boost. This sneaker released at Haven in store and on their site on Saturday, April 1st, 2017, a week before the worldwide release, which is customary for consortium releases. I really didn't want to have to resort to camping because my cousin's wedding was the same weekend and I wanted to be well rested and prepared for it and all the events going forth, but I had to pull out the chair because my online game has been real weak lately and I didn't want to risk missing out. Obviously, all the youngins had been camping out for over 24 hours. I couldn't pull that off, so I got there the night before. If you haven't already done so, check out my video documenting a portion of the camp to get a better idea of the experience. It really turned into a bit of a commotion and drama because of the resellers fudging around with the line. Thankfully, Haven staff handled the situation very well. Kudos to them. On to the sneaker. My honest opinion when I first saw these sneakers was meh easy pass and i know what you're thinking easy pass to camping out for hours on end huge difference right well let me tell you why truthfully i did not like haven's promo pics of these sneakers they really made them look underwhelming and that's not to knock the person who took the photos the effects and composition of those photos are nice they had the whole flame going the smoke but having an all black shoe against a background that is almost just as dark it just kept the unique aspects and aesthetics of the shoe from popping. It kind of felt like they were trying to overplay the idea of a triple black uncaged ultra boost by making the whole thing triple black. However, my opinion quickly changed on these as fast as hoes change clothes. Once I saw more images pop up on Instagram of people who own them wearing them, they just look much better in basically any other picture other than the promo pics, which is weird to say. I think these are the least photogenic Ultra Boost by far, but at the same time, they're like those people you know that aren't photogenic but look great in person and have a great personality. Come on, I know you know at least a handful of those people that would fit into that category. This is the sneaker version of that phenomenon. These look great in person. I've passed up on a lot of triple black sneakers just because, as I've said in past reviews, on my list of preferable colorways, monochromatic colorways such as all white or all black are the lowest on the list. So it's a little hypocritical of me to own these sneakers right here because I'm straight up implying that my preferences don't mean sh**. Listen here, all right? There are exceptions. We all bend the rules sometimes. Please don't rip me a new one. As for the Haven Ultra Boost, I got these in a size 10, which is my true to size, and they fit perfectly. This collab dons the Ultra Boost 2.0 Prime Knit pattern, which is a first for a consortium collab, mind you. So this was a little weird for me since 2.0s usually have enough room for me to be able to comfortably go half a size down and still fit. These, on the other hand, fit perfect at true to size. I really want to emphasize that, that they're a needle in a haystack pair of Ultra Boost. No joke, just because of the sizing, let me break down what I mean. Generally, in the Ultra Boost, with the 1.0 knit pattern, most people have to go half a size up since the sneaker fits too snug otherwise at true to size. This means that yes, the sneaker fits, but there's a bit of toe room lengthwise since it's not your true size. The 2.0 tends to have the opposite issue. The prime knit is relatively softer than the 1.0 prime knit and there's a bit of space for me at true to size. I also know quite a few people who go half a size up in 2.0s as well since they claim true to size fits too tight, which I can't fathom. Imagine if I have a little space in the toe box at true to size, how much they would have. The Ultra Boost 3.0, a lot of people claim fits big, so they go half a size down. I personally think half a size down is too tight unless I take the insole out. I can wear true to size in the 3.0 for this reason, but once again with a little bit of toe box space or half down without an insole would be perfect. You see what I mean? There are so many factors to consider and there's always some type of compromise being made with these Ultra Boosts in terms of sizing or shape. When it comes to the Haven Ultra Boost, I went true to size and the fit is perfect. No extra toe box space, no removal of the insole is necessary. I'm also a wide foot in case you didn't know. Wearing these sneakers is zen. Shout out to Haven for being the fixer of things. First fixing line cutter issues, then fixing ultra boost sizing issues. Well, technically they probably fixed the sizing issue first since the sneaker was made before the release, but they also could have been fixing previous lineup issues as well, so who knows. Anyways, we're taking a wide left turn over here, so let's turn back right quick. I had to record the b-roll indoors since it was raining heavily, which is oddly appropriate since the design of this sneaker was inspired by the dark, cloudy, rainy, and stormy days Vancouver experiences so often. Vancouver is the city Haven originated from, so it is strongly tied to their roots. The upper of this sneaker is all black and is made of prime knit. As I mentioned earlier, it is the first consortium collab to don the Ultra Boost 2.0 knit pattern. Many nice little details on the shoe. The heel cup is all black and is a nice soft leather which I believe is a first as well for the heel cup. 
We have this ATR tape running across the medial, lateral side, and toe box of the shoe to protect your foot and sneaker from environmental mess such as dirt, snow, puddles of water, etc. It's also perforated to maximize breathability and this might seem counterproductive to being protective, but to be honest, for an Ultra Boost that's going to be for casual use 99.9% .9 of the time, it really doesn't have any sort of significant negative effect. We then have the tongue, which is leather and has the consortium hole punch and tabs with the Adidas logo on the left tongue and Haven branding on the right tongue, as well as the consortium handshake logos on the back of the tabs, AKA the inside of the tongue. Then we have the all black pull tabs on the back of the shoe. If you haven't realized by now, this is an all black shoe. The boost is blacked out or murdered out as they like to call it. Black outsole with the white boost popping through the bottom. I love how it's normal for the boost to be white from the bottom, but when the triple black ultra boost first came out, people complained to no end that that was the case because it meant the boost wasn't truly dyed black and was just painted on. The insoles are all leather and have the consortium text printed all across them with Adidas branded on one insole and Haven branded on the other. Usually leather insoles means your foot is going to slip and slide around in the sneaker when you wear it and this probably would have been the case for this sneaker as well. My SNSX Social Status Ultra Boost feel like an ice rink since they have leather insoles too. You actually won't experience that same slippage in these for one reason and I've mentioned it before, these fit perfectly. I can't stress this enough, these are the needle in the haystack, the Ultra Boost 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, not even the Kith Ultra Boost fit as good as this in my opinion. I think it's that ATR tape across the toe box that gives it this perfect fit. So the reason why you don't slip is because the fit is so perfect, your foot doesn't have anywhere to move. Anyways, they're also an uncaged version of the Ultra Boost 2.0, which is another friggin' first. Haven just doesn't cease to amaze with this. They have taping to prevent wear on the eyelets, and the laces are flat and black with 3M diagonal stripes running through it. That's right, the laces shine, so if you're going for a run in these, you can rest assured that a knowledgeable driver who's checking out your heat will stop promptly to give you the right away. That was a joke. They probably won't catch you just from the reflection on your laces. Stay safe, youngins. Put some more 3M on. I do find the laces a bit too long for my liking. When I lace them normally, they just look a little funny, but that's fixable with different lacing techniques. <clears throat> cough, cough, like hype beast lacing. It was also a good thing that it was raining since I was able to test out the ATR and how well it really works. Well, long story short, it works well. I'm so glad they added this to the shoe because otherwise my toes and sides of my feet would be soaked from all the jumping and splashing of water. Instead, only a little bit got through the top, so that's a plus. What I found extremely weird and still do, and this might be my only real gripe with this sneaker, I'm not sure if this is a design oversight or if they did this on purpose, but the last two eyelets at the top of the lace holes, which the laces don't go through right out of the box, are very difficult and may at first seem impossible to get laced. You might be wondering why, at first glance, it seems like there's a material stitched on the other side preventing the laces from going through, which it is, there is this layer of material stitched along the inner ankle collar of the shoe that stops the laces from going through the holes but eventually after a little bit of fidgeting around you notice that it's not stitched from underneath and all you really have to do to get the laces in is pull the fabric upwards to temporarily clear the space behind the eyelet letting the lace through. Of course this isn't very intuitive nor does it seem purposeful what I want to guess it is, is that they were too far into the design process and noticed this too late, but also realized that it's not really an issue, just a minor inconvenience to those who like having things handed to them. All in all, this is really getting up to being my favorite Ultra Boost collab just based on the perfect fit. Although it scores high praise for other additions such as the ATR taping and uncased look for me as well, the comfort is on par with any Ultra Boost you wear. The opening is a little less of a tight hug as you'd get with say the regular Ultra Boost 2.0 or any caged Ultra Boost in general, but it still does the job well. The familiar Boost midsole keeps every step cushioned, pillow status check. Overall, this is a keeper for me for all those reasons. Also because I gotta support the Canadian sneaker fam and I've been meaning to add a proper all black shoe to the rotation as it is a very versatile color. Not my favorite, but it is versatile. I probably don't need any more though as most triple black ultra boosts in my opinion look pretty similar. I'm wearing K-Bell socks with these in a gray and black colorway with this cute ninja pattern running across it. If you're not about Shinobi, what's your life about, man? Ninja Gaiden, you remember that? I love that sh I'm wearing slim tapered joggers from Uniqlo. Honestly, they were labeled as joggers when I bought them, but they're really just tapered elastic jeans. The main characteristics of joggers is that elastic band at the bottom that this doesn't seem to have. They're extremely comfortable and soft nonetheless. Nice taper, a bit too long for me, but that can always be fixed. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you took something from the review, please hit that like button. 
Shout out to the rain and fog for perfectly encapsulating the inspiration for these sneakers. I know there were a lot of mixed opinions on these. I really want to know what you guys think about them. And please hit that sub button for more juicy content. Catch you later. Pixelated, out.